All right, so uh, welcome to your kind of your first lesson, maybe your first, I guess, kind of video lesson of the year in Algebra 1. Um, and so what we want to do first um, is really just talk about some key things for you to be successful as you take notes. So you should be taking notes. So today um, you should be on linear functions and tables of value. Um, this is Algebra 1. Uh, unit 1 lesson 2 so you should have this out in front of you um, but one of the key things that you should do is as we go through the video is pause it as much as needed right so if you don't quite hear something um, you get distracted um, you don't understand something pause the video do that as much as needed remember class part of the advantage of having the video is that you can work at uh, the problems on your own time you can listen to it on your own time so if it ever gets too much just pause take a breath do the work whatever you need um, get a drink of water come back uh, replay the video as much as needed so if you do hear something and you're unsure about it right roll it back 30 seconds or a minute and then hear it again or see it again um, and and get what you need out of that the other thing that we really want you doing is uh, filling out the notes completely um, and there may be times that you don't fully understand everything, but we still want you writing everything down. We still want you doing all of the work. And that leads into the next thing. So highlight, circle, star, do something, right, as you progress through the notes, if there's something you don't understand, so that you remember to ask a question about it next time. Um, we'll also be doing um, some little feedback forms at the end of all these video lessons and that would be an opportunity where you can take that question or that problem that you've started and give us some feedback and we can answer that and address that issue at the beginning of class when we see you and then there you will be prompted to pause the video and do work uh, and we really 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 want you to do that all right so you know pause the video give it a good attempt you may not get everything right and that's not the goal we're not asking you for you to be perfect. We're not asking you for um, you know every question to be right, but we really do want you to try to work through problems so you can experience them. You can kind of um, think about them in your own way, all right, and then see what and how we go through the problems, all right. So we want you to kind of develop some of that understanding on your own, and then we can help clarify that as we go. So that's just some of the initial things that we want you to think about and do while we're taking notes. So let's just get into that right away so if we look at our first lesson here uh, it's linear functions uh, and what we really want to work on is like how can I determine if a given set of data is linear how can I look at that data what information can I get from that data that will tell me that it is in fact linear now if you look at the top of your notes all right we are standards based um, learning um, so for every lesson there's going to be a handful of um, standards that we're going to try to address and we want you to fully understand those so one of those um, is standard 1.1 I can identify a linear function from a table of values all right standard 2.1 I can identify the rate of change for a linear function from a table of values and then standard 3.1 I can find missing values in a table or extended table in either direction by using my knowledge my knowledge excuse me of rates of change for linear relationships all right so that's what we're going to try to address and hopefully you feel comfortable with most of this if not all of it by the end of the lesson all right so um, now if you look the next part, um, thing on your note all right is the opener so this is one of those times where we're going to want you to pause the video and try to answer these questions and do this work i will read it first all right so you just signed a new cell phone contract you pay an initial fee of $250 and then your monthly payment for unlimited voice text and data is $30 per month so create a table of values that models this situation then state how much you've paid after six month, months and then one year so what I'd like you to do right now is pause the video all right fill out that table on the right hand side or left hand side on your paper all right uh, and then answer those four questions and then we'll come back and see how you did so go ahead and pause that video all right so now let's take a look at what you did all right so um, when we look at this hopefully um, you started with okay so we paid two hundred and fifty dollars right so that was kind of the month zero or the initial fee and we'll get to that term in just a minute and then I paid thirty dollars per month right so if that would be two hundred eighty dollars and then if I add another thirty three ten three forty three seventy four hundred four thirty and then right now by extending that pattern of adding thirty dollars every month we can see that after six months we pay four hundred thirty dollars now to get to one year we have to just continue that uh, for a few more months here all right so four sixty four ninety five twenty five fifty five eighty and then you can see at the end of one year or twelve months 
All right, we spent $610. All right, so now which of these four functions do you think this is? Hopefully, hopefully you said it was linear. And hopefully the reason why you said it was linear is because that rate of change per month does not change. It's a constant rate of change, right? It's just 30, 30, 30, 30, which is key for something to be a linear function. Okay, so now let's take this problem. Um, and if you want to go ahead and flip your page, we're not going to be on the back of that first page. I'm going to flip my notes here so I uh, can see that in front of me as well. All right, but what if the information was given to you numerically? So what if it was given to you in a table of values instead of the words um, like it was before? All right, so now if you had this information, all right, Month zero, you pay two fifty. Month one, you pay two hundred eighty. Month two, you could pay three ten. Month three, you pay three hundred forty dollars. Could you figure out how much you spend after six months? So once again, just pause that video, maybe a minute here. Um, think about like how would you do that? How would you address this issue? All right. So, and really, um, it's a lot like what. Um, you just did. We've kind of already started that table for you, right? But it's really that same idea that when I look at my table, it's like, oh, I'm going up by one month, right? And I can see that, okay, I'd want to keep going up by one month, right? I got to get to six months, right? So there we go. Now, when I look at that total amount, it's like, oh, well, I added 30 the first month. I added $30 the next month. I added $30 the next month. And so now we how to just get that $30 per month from the table versus when it was written in words on the prior problem uh, in the opener. And so I can continue that pattern. Well, let's add three or $30 again and we get 370 and add $30 again and now I'm going to get 400 And you can see that we add $30 and we get to that same $430. So this is really the same problem that we did in the opener. The only thing that changes, all right, is the context of the problem. So how do I pull that information out of the problem all right, to get to the same conclusion. And once again, let's take another look. All right, right here. So notice now we don't start at the beginning, but does that change what you would do, right? Could you still figure out how much money you spent after six months? Could you now figure out the initial fee because it's not stated and it's not in our table? So once again, this is that opportunity where um, you can pause the video. I want you to think about this just a minute, all right, and then we can come back and discuss it. So go ahead and pause that video. All right, so now let's, let's look at this, right? So really, to figure out um, how much we spent, it's really the same idea, right? Oh, I go up a month, I go up $30. I go up a month, I go up $30. I go up a month, I go up $30. And so I can continue that pattern now, right? And I can get to month six, I can add another $30, and I get back to $430, right? So once again, you're seeing it's the same idea, right? We're just drawing it out. Now the challenge is now we have to work backwards, right? So if we want the initial fee, now I have to say, okay, so what month came before month two? That would have been month one, right? Well, I had to have, if I continue the pattern, what did I add 30 to, right? And so now that we're working backwards, instead of adding 30, we would subtract su subtract 30, all right? So 310 minus 30 would be 280. And then we would just work that back one more month, right, to get to month zero, which is that initial fee. And then once again, it's like, okay, I had to add 30 if I continue that pattern, and I can get to $250. So the idea that we're really trying to build is that a lot of that information that we want, all right, is contained all right, in the table values. But we just kind of have to dig it out looking at those rates of change in the left-hand column, which is our inputs, which is typically our X values. And then in the right-hand column, which are our outputs or our Y values. So let's move on to um, some key terminology. So once again, this is another um, piece here um, that you might need to pause the video because I'm going to throw the um, definition up there, the terms up there. Um, and you might need to pause the video, write those down, and then um, we can come back to it. So initial value, right? So the initial value is the value associated with the beginning of the problem. And this is typically when x is equal to zero or t is equal to zero. All right, so we think about that in the terms of the real world. It's kind of when things start when x is equal to zero. All right, rate of change. Okay, a rate of change describes how each output or y value is changing per one input or x value. All right, so the change in y to the change in x. Now, we're going to put one word in front of this definition. 
constant rate of change. So what is a constant rate of change? Well, when we look at those ratios of change in y to the change in x, if they always reduce to the same value, then it's a constant rate of change. So like in our previous examples, it was $30 per one month, $30 per one month. It never changed, right? That ratio 30 to 1 was always the same. And that's what we're going to look for, all right, when we're looking for linear functions. When I look at that rate of change, I want it to be constant. All right, so take a deep breath if you need to pause the video because what we want to do now um, is go through uh, a couple of problems together, all right, and, and get a feel for how we're going to take everything that we just talked about, these definitions, the opener, and then how do we now extract that information uh, from a table of values. All right, so now um, we should be on, all right, this guy right here, so linear functions, table values, all right, and if you look, all right, we have labels to help here, so like, um, whole class practice. That's typically what we're going to do together. Um, we'll typically do one or two whole class problems in the videos with you to get give a feel for kind of how all the information is flowing. And then we'll do some in class. All right, you can see down here that we have group problems. All right, so we'll be doing those in class. And then we have independent practice on the back, which is basically the homework. All right, but we won't get to that quite yet. So right now, if you're looking at your notes, you should be on problem one. Um, you should see this problem. All right, so here's the goal. We have this table of values right there, and we can see that the x's, it's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, right? And we look at our y values, we go 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36. So here's the two questions uh, that we really, really want to figure out, right? So we want to figure out, okay, so what is the rate of change, all right, that's happening in this set of data and these numbers, and then what function does that represent? Okay, now what we're going to do when we do this is we're going to look at our changes in X and we're going to look at our changes in Y and that's going to help us um, define our rate of change and then that'll help us determine the function. That will also then help us see the pattern in numbers where we can extend and fill in because you can see we're missing those three um, values on the right hand side. So what we want you to do is always look at each individual thing, how it's changing, we physically want you to write like a plus one right there. So just that blue plus one I see. So we want you writing that on paper. So that should be like a plus one. All right. And so what we want to do is look at, okay, all right. So I increased by one on my X, my Y's went up by six. So now my ratio is six to one. It's always change in Y to the change in X. All right. So now I look at my next set. When I go from seven to eight, I increase by one. All right, when I go from 18 to 24, I increase by 6. So we can see that ratio is the same, 6 to 1, 6 to 1. 8 to 9, I go up by 1. 24 to 30, I go up by 6. Right, so now you can see that it looks pretty constant, right? It looks like every time we increase by 1, Y goes up by 6. So we can see that that ratio is the same here, 6 to 1, 6 to 1, 6 to 1, 6 to 1. So now we can use that to extend our table. So I went from up 1 here. So if I extend that again, now I need to go up by 6. All right, and then 36 plus 6 is 42. All right, so let's do that one more time here. All right, so when I go from 11 to 12, I increase by 1. That means I now need to go up by 6. All right, so 42 plus 6 is 48. And then one final time here to finish our table here up by 6 when we go up by 1 and we get to 54. So you can see that we want to look at the, those change in y's and those change in x's, right? And we can then use that pattern to extend, all right, and fill in those missing values. Now, notice all those rates of change were constant, all right? 6 to 1, 6 to 1, 6 to 1, 6 to 1. So what that tells me is my rate of change is a constant of 6 to 1. And if you want to just write 6, that's totally fine. We typically write most of our things as ratio, so just to keep us as a reminder that it's always a ratio. So you'll see me a lot of times when I'm showing my answer keys at work, I'll write 6 to 1. And if something has a constant rate of change, we know that that is a linear function. All right, and that's really the work. That's what we want you to be able to do is look at that set of numbers, right, and see that pattern of change all right, to extend the table, fill in the table, define that rate of change, all right, and your function. Let's do one more together, and then um, we are through with this video. All right, so let's look at example two. So notice this time we kind of have the bottom half, right, of our table, and we're going to eventually have to work it back up, okay? So now when I look at 
this guy, right? Once again, we're going to start on that left side, and we go up by one, up by one, up by one, right? Now, once again, I'm going a little fast, so I'll slow down here because I know you're trying to write. But once again, I get in a bad habit of that. All right, pause the video and catch up. So I'll try not to be that bad. All right, and then add one again, add one again, add one again, add one. So we can see that our inputs, our x values, are all increasing by 1. So let's look at the data that we do have. So when I go from 12 to 18, I increase by 6. When I go from 18 to 24, I increase by 6. When I go from 24 to 30, I increase by 6. When I go from 30 to 36, I increase by 6. So we can see, once again, we're back in that same situation. And, and this is really the same problem because we wanted you to see this, um, um, this pattern that now I can take this same thing and now like we did all right um, a couple problems ago we can work backwards okay so I had to add 6 to get to 12 all right so that means I must have had 6 right because 6 plus 6 is 12 and then I want to work backwards again okay so what plus 6 is 6 0 right and then I can work it back one more time right and then I get to negative 6 all right, and that's really the point of the lesson. And once again, we still have that same constant of 6 over 1, all right? And because it is a constant rate of change, we know it's a linear function. All right, so that is all, my friends. So um, what you should do now is you should um, be on the Schoology site, uh, Schoology site, sorry, Schoology site. Um, and what we want you to do now is fill out the Google form. There will be a few questions for you. Submit that. Let us know you watched the video. Let us know what questions you have. And then we will see you in class tomorrow.